But first, when you think of hatred and irrational behaviour by some politicians towards Israel, you probably think of the Looney Greens. But Labor is emerging as the leader in that respect. Listen to this outburst just a week ago from Labor Senator and Senate Deputy President Sue Lyons. The Amnesty International report published last week confirms Israeli policies against Palestinians fit the definition of the international crime of apartheid. The report follows a long list of other institutions and human rights organisations, international, Palestinian and Israeli, that have analysed and confirmed the policies of successive Israeli governments constitute apartheid. Now, Senator Lyons is nearly 70 years old. She's old enough to remember apartheid in South Africa. And there is no excuse for her propagating this Amnesty International libel against Israel. Labor Foreign Affairs spokeswoman Penny Wong told The Australian that Lyons' use of apartheid in this context does not reflect the position of the Labor Party. She also said it's not a term that's been found to apply by any international court and is not helpful in progressing meaningful dialogue and negotiation necessary to achieve a just and enduring peace. But this is the Senate's deputy president we're talking about. Why is Labor allowing Senator Lyons to remain in that role when she's pouring bile on Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, by the way? Well, the answer is quite simple, because hatred of Israel runs deep in Labor and the pro-Palestinian faction is strong. And the use of the term apartheid to demonise Israel is not confined to Senator Lyons. As the Daily Telegraph reported last year, former Foreign Affairs Minister and New South Wales Labor Premier Bob Carr told the newspaper, millions of Palestinians live under Israeli sovereignty on the occupied West Bank, yet lack the civil rights, including voting rights, that Jewish citizens living on the West Bank enjoy. You have apartheid by definition. It doesn't stop there. Queensland Labor MP Graham Perrett, the member for Morton, just last year. Rallies everywhere throughout Australia remembered the brutal extinguishment and sacking of more than 400 Palestinian villages, the first steps in that long journey to the establishment of what would appear to be a semi-apartheid state between the Dead Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. And then there's a former Labor Senator for Tasmania, Lisa Singh, this from 2017. It is about confiscating land and dividing Palestinian territories to ensure the unviability of a Palestinian state. It creates an isolation system and it constrains freedom of movement. The result is massive racial discrimination. The only other country like this was apartheid South Africa. We've also got this from another Labor senator from Tasmania, Anne Urquhart. Do you see a theme emerging here? The lack of responsibility and the decadence in Australia's policy in support of Israel, with all that it represents in terms of occupation, aggression, racism and gross violations of international law and UN resolutions. While obviously not change, will obviously not change the reality that Jerusalem is under Israel's occupation. But all it does is appease the extremist Israeli lobby. As US Secretary of State John Kerry has described, Israel risks become, becoming an apartheid state if there is no two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That was in 2014. She's now Labor's chief whip in the Senate. Then there's former federal Labor MP Melissa Park. We can forget her input. This is what the then member for Fremantle said in 2016. It has been heartening to see increasing recognition in this place of the injustices suffered by the Palestinian people as a result of the decades-long occupation, the continued illegal settlement building, the Gaza blockade and the discrimination within and outside of Israel. This situation harms everyone, including Israel, which will find it increasingly difficult to combat claims that it is becoming an apartheid state within the meaning of the International Criminal Court's Rome Statute. 
Do I need to go on? We could be here all night. Last year, an embarrassed Penny Wong tried to distance Federal Labor after a majority of delegates at Queensland Labor State Conference successfully moved to motion accusing Israel of ethnic cleansing. Then there's the current member for Fremantle, Labor MP Josh Wilson, who had this to say at a fringe event at the ALP National Conference in 2018. Checkpoints are overly and unnecessarily military pieces of infrastructure. They are resonant with occupation. Uh, they're not just portals uh, whose passage through which Palestinians pay in humiliation and, and time and delay and discomfort. Um, in some cases, these are places you know you go to and you don't get through, and sometimes they're places you go to and you do get through, and sometimes they're places you go to and you go to jail, or you go to and you go to hospital, or you go to and you die. The leak of this video did enormous damage coming on the eve of the 2019 election, prompting then opposition leader Bill Shorten to try to convince voters he had control of the rogue members. A second West Australian Labor Party member is facing pressure to resign over controversial comments about the Israel-Palestine conflict. The opposition leader has been trying to downplay the controversy. Here's what Bill Shorten had to say. First of all, uh, the MPs, Mr Wilson and Senator Lyons, have reconfirmed again this morning that they support Labor Party policy. Finally, there's Labor frontbencher and former deputy leader Tanya Plibersek, who said of Israel in 2002, I can think of a rogue state which consistently ignores UN resolutions, whose ruler is a war criminal responsible for the massacres of civilians in refugee camps outside its borders. It is called Israel. And the war criminal is Ariel, Ariel Sharon. Penny Wong, in responding to Senator Lyon's latest outburst, said... Here we go. Sorry. Labor is a strong friend of Israel. That's what Penny Wong wants you to believe. Really, Penny, you could have fooled me.